Hey, good day everybody. If you couldn't tell, it's not morning time. It's in the evening. So we're having to push these walking videos to the evening now because it's way too dark when I get up uh, to do the videos. I can't even shoot them. All you get is basically see me eyeball, my eyeballs and my teeth. So we're going to move them to the evening and we're going to figure it out as, as time change comes and it get, the days get longer and everything. So so just expect it to be fluid. We're not going to call them morning insights anymore. I'm just going to call them insights or maybe grumpy insights. I don't know. I haven't figured it out. Something, something catchy. Put it down in the in the comments below what you think I should title these videos. So anyway, what is today's talk about? Well, I want to clarify something. Oh, fancy found a squished frog. I want to clarify something and I want to talk about making a Christian choice. Okay, so first off, clarification. I was on Unique Prepping's uh, live last week, Zach, and we were talking about critical thinking and free thinking and everything, and I made the comment to the effect that the church, at its, at, in its basic form, the church body, is basically communal. And it, it's, I came off sound like I was saying that, the, that communalism is what gives the person their value. And I, I, I listened to that as I was fixing it up so I could replay it on my channel. And I realized exactly how bad that sounded. And that is not what I meant to say. I left it in there because, because it's one of those things. I said it, and if people want to comment it on that video, that's fine. Well, I'll address it. I want to address it here, too. So, the the, the contention that the, the church in its basic form is communal is true. If you, if you look at it, especially the first century churches, they were extremely communal. And what I meant to say was that the church body helps reaffirm our worth. Our worth comes from God. You know, the fact that we're made in His image and we should strive to to align ourselves as closely to His will as possible. And we're always going to fall short. But the church body helps reaffirm somebody's worth. And all those teachings of Jesus is exactly what does that, what what gives us our worth. And, and then the, the church body helps reaffirm it. All right? And that's why, that's why community is so special. You know, church communities... Just a regular community. Um, it's special because it, it it helps us through times when we're, when we're fighting ourselves over that that topic. You know, what exactly are we worth? All right. So that's what I meant to say, and hopefully that clarifies. The next thing, making a Christian choice. So in 2020, uh, John MacArthur, who's a well known well known uh, Christian speaker, pastor wrote an article discussing whether evangelicals should support Trump, should vote for Trump. And he listed off all the things that made Trump a flawed human being, and he alluded to the idea that as evangelicals, you couldn't support a man like that. Right? And so he wasn't saying support the alternative, he was just... He was just, in my mind, the way I read it originally was he was talking about discernment, right? And do, does, a, does a Christian really want to support somebody like that? Hey, check this out. We got, we got new friends. Check this out. Hey, guys. Can you see him? Look at that. There's, there's two of them in there. They're just kind of walking along the fence, checking us out. Anyway. So the, the, the question, and, and that I hear that, that all the time. In fact, the, the left likes using that as a tool to bludgeon Christians about supporting Trump. All right? And Charlie Kirk addressed it on a video I saw recently. And he did the most awesome job. He painted the perfect reply to that argument that a Christian should not follow Trump because Trump's a flawed individual. And... Charlie Kirk made the point that, that God, God uses flawed people to enact his will. And I look at David. David was a man of God. 
Yeah, he was an adulterer. He was a murderer. He was, he was not a good guy a lot of the, a lot of the times. But he came he came to know God and, and he he did what he's supposed to do. And then you got Samson. Samson was not Samson was not the best guy in the world, but he he was used by God to to put down the Philistines, right? And and just throughout history we see it. You know, through the through the Bible itself, we we see the Pharaoh. You know, and throughout history we see we see it all the time. So that kind of takes part of that argument off the table. But Charlie Kirk went a step further, and he made the point that if you're an evangelical, there's one issue and one issue alone that your vote could possibly hinge on, and that's the topic of abortion. And he said, on that topic alone, no matter how flawed Trump is, an evangelical should support him because he's he's not he's not necessarily anti-abortion, although he's he's made comments to that, but he is for turning it back over to the states and getting the federal government out of the discussion and out of the outcome. And by doing that, he's pushing it down to the will of the people. And time and time again, we've seen votes that are put up where the people say, no, we, we, we want to get rid of abortion. So by that topic alone, I'm thinking that an evangelical or somebody who calls themselves a Christian should look at this flawed individual and make a decision and support that decision. Right? Because... because Voting for one side in this next election is voting for pro-life. And voting for the other side, or not voting at all, is tacitly or actively supporting pro-abortion, pro-death to children. All right? So there's there's the decision. That's making, that's making the Christian choice. Now, you guys, I, I'm not an expert in this. Lord knows. Lord knows I am a sinner. I am a flawed individual. I'm, I'm, I, I don't know the scripture inside and out. Don't know it as well as I should. But from where I'm sitting in the, in the bleachers, that's the way the topic looks to me. And that's the way, if that was going to be my one deciding factor, that would be it. All right, if I was a one issue voter, that is exactly why I would do that. Because here's the deal. Not all Republicans are pro-life. Some of them, some of them are Democrats in disguise, and they, they refuse to take a stand morally on it, and they refuse to, to stand by their convictions. On the other hand, the Democrat Party, as a matter of policy, is anti-child. And it starts in the womb, and it extends way beyond that. So... If you support a party that by policy is like that, then you are like that. I hate to say that. And you can say a lot of bad stuff about the Republicans, individual Republicans especially, and then as a party. But you cannot say that the Republican Party or, or all Republicans support that as a policy, right? So there, there's, there's, making a, there's making your decision. All right, listen. I hope I hope this wasn't too controversial for some of you. Uh, it's something I, I felt I needed to address, and I just I wanted to clarify that, and then I wanted to, to make a comment about making that 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 Christian decision because it's hard, man. Sometimes sometimes it is hard. All right, listen. You want to support the ch channel? Go hit the affiliate links. As always, I say that. If you made it this far and I didn't turn you off. Think about hitting this the, the subscriber button if you're not already a subscriber. Come and join us. We talk about stuff like this. And, and the overriding message here is living a life done free. That means being informed and making intelligent choices. And most importantly, guys, go live a life done free today. Okay? Take care. <laughs> Thanks, Milo.